Hang on to your pants. Hi, I'm Dan the Monster Man. I'm here to talk about paper mache. Now, you say that to some people and they'll think of a pig or they'll think of a bird or they'll think of a pig and a bird, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'd like to change that image if I could, but a little history first. Paper mache has been around for a very long time. It started in China where they first made paper. Then they made helmets and armor to protect themselves from marauding puppets. And then it started, it was in India and then in Japan and of course in Europe. Now we know it landed in France. They're the ones that put the funny little symbols over the words paper mache. And that literally means to chew paper. Now they actually had children choosing, chewing paper so that they could squish it together into stuff that they called French art. Now, later on, way later on in the United States, there was an elementary teacher who wanted to make piggies with her kids, and she used balloons and flour and, flour and water paste and newspaper strips, and she called it paper mache, but there was nothing French or chewed about it. Now, I made a space helmet. I don't know about you. Now, many of you actually had an experience like that, in fact, when you were young. In fact, this is really stuck in the American psyche. If you look at Wikipedia under paper mache, right now the first image you see is a balloon with a toilet paper tube leg, and they're making a paper mache pig, and I want this to stop right now. Now, in 1972, I was a young hippie teacher, and I used to have my kids do paper mache, but we, I never let them do anything cute, and they couldn't use balloons. They had to make monsters, which were much more fun, and they were goof-proof because you couldn't tell a kid that put the horn was in the wrong place. Now, the kids noticed that when they worked on the monsters, it was easy if the mouth, mouth was open. So it looked like they were screaming, so they started calling them screamers, and that stuck. Now, I've been doing this ever since, trying to get people to do this art form because it's a great art form. I've been pretty successful. 1984, my first book came out. It was called The Simple Screamer. It sold around the world, 22 years in print. And that, along with the sequel, makes something ugly for a change. I think revitalized the, the world of paper mache. Now look, I'm here to tell you, this is not your third grade paper mache anymore. I still make monsters, monsters with their families. Sometimes I make cute little twin animals and uh, blue dogs, effeminate Frankensteins, and a pig. Every once in, a while, once in a while I make a pig. Now the monsters I really like to make aren't really monsters, they're dragons. I've made red dragons and blue dragons and green dragons. Sea dragons and little dragons and their moms. And I've made trophy dragons that you can hang on the wall. Now, since I love dragons so much, I'm going to give you a quick little tutorial. First, you've got to get Max off the newspaper. <laughs> then you crumple up the newspaper into balls until you finally get one that's head size and body size. I do the same with arms and legs, but I put that into, into clothes hangers so you can bend them later. Now, this part you remember about paper mache, and I do it sort of the same way. But there's two things you've got to remember. You only put your hands in the paste and you'll only use one piece of paper at a time. And if you do that and put it someplace warm, you're going to end up with balls that are really hard and light. Now, you need more than balls to make a dragon. You need toes as well. And, of course, the toes <laughs> you make into feet, and then the feet you hook onto the body, and then you fight off Eddie before you can put on the neck. <laughs> now, of course, you also need a little head. I use teeth out of Fimo, and then I put it inside a paper mache ball that I make for a jaw, which then I put on the neck. I like taxidermy eyes. They're glass, and they're really beautiful. Then you embellish the head any way you want. Now, this is my claim to fame in the mache world. I, I invented something I call cloth mache. It's a final coating, a skin of torn up bed sheets that you put in Elmer's glue. You can get amazing detail that way with scales and body armor and fantastic wings. <laughs> And it makes the project really strong at the end. It's durable. I've had some last for many, many years. Now, I paint it with latex enamels, just house paint, dark paint and then light. And while it's still wet, I blend the two together. And before I'm done, I water down black paint, cover the whole thing in black. And while it's still wet, I wipe it off. It really brings out the color. I call it black washing. Now, this better turned into a good picture because I wait for this. There it is. Some of you have kids in the audience remembering your child was being born. Well, this is my baby being born, where I, I uncover the eyes, and I call this the birth of a dragon. In fact, I brought this guy here. It is time. Now, I know that was fast. I hope I piqued your interest in this art form. Maybe I awakened an inner child, or you have an inner child at home that needs an art project. I have a new book called Paper Mache Monsters. You can get it in bookstores or at my website. So one of them is papermache.com, either spelling. In fact, I have uh, tutorials, and I have time-lapse videos, and I have galleries on my websites. And one of them is gourmetpapermache.com, but you can find them at any one of these. You can write them down right now. 
I'm one of these people who buys a domain every time I think of it. You know, I own papermachevolcanoes.com. I've never even made a volcano. You know, you can just bing me at Dan Papermache. You'll get to me. Thank you so much. Thanks for making art. <laughs>